You've done the hard work. You did your research, you put the phone call in, and now it's time to deliver. That's right, following on from our previous videos, you are now showing up for an interview to try and talk your way into an internship. Hi, I'm Stu from Studium, and we have been talking to people about the best way to get themselves uh, a job or their foot in the front door. And we've always advocated that the best way to do that is to jump on the phone and cold call your way into an opportunity. And the best way to create that opportunity is to offer your services, potentially for free, uh, but in the form of an internship, which are relatively um, safe options for employers. It gives them an opportunity to try before they buy. And on the other hand, it gives you an opportunity to try before you buy. So in today's uh, video, we wanna give you a couple of tips on how to nail the interview to get an internship. These interviews are a little bit different to your bog standard job interview. And most job interviews are kind of terrible. They ask you a bunch of behavioral style questions. Um, you know, you just give them some road answers and trying to come up with some creative examples that they perhaps haven't heard before to make yourself stand out. What we've encouraged you to do previously is to talk your way into this internship uh, on the guise of you being a student or a young person who's looking to gather more information about the field and to pick the brain of the person you're going to chat with. Now you haven't even talked about getting an internship, you're going in there with the express uh, intent to find out more about this person, their business and their career paths, which would better inform you and uh, your academic journey. So. While it's not an interview, this is your one chance to absolutely impress the person that you are going to speak to and hopefully uh, create yourself an opportunity that lasts or sorry, leads to a meaningful employment opportunity down the road. The opportunity here is to, as I said, do your homework and really start to ask smart questions. Now, what you don't want to do is look like an absolute stalker and start regurgitating uh, information about someone's children that you may have stumbled across on Facebook. That's probably taking the research a little bit to the extreme. You really want to start from, you know, I noticed you did this degree, what led you to your first opportunity, how did you get that, what, what things set you apart, what things did you do to uh, progress your career and perhaps ahead of some of your peers. A good manager doing this type of thing is probably just not going to sit there uninterested and if they're completely uninterested you probably don't want to work for them anyway so you really got to keep the conversation going and get the person talking about them so other interesting things you can talk about particularly if you can find information about their business in the media or online is you know what direction is the company going what are some of the big challenges you've got coming up in the year um, you really want to show that you're generally interested about what it is they're doing and uh, where they're going Tip number two, at some stage this person is gonna ask you about you. So make sure you have some interesting stories, some interesting insights, or something that differentiates you. If you, um, if they say, hey, what kind of work have you done before you say nothing? And you don't have a good counter to that, if you have done nothing, um, yeah, a couple of red flags there. So you wanna make sure that your story is interesting as well, or as interesting as you can make it. So what are the things that you found interesting in your degree, course of study, what learnings have you um, taken on board? Those types of things you want to make sure that you look like you're an interesting character. Tip number three. Try and work in some insights or some stories about how you've gone the extra mile. We, um, we, we, we being uh, an older generation, tend to have a negative view on the generation that comes after us. The generation above me thought that I was useless, may have been. We have perceptions and opinions on the generations below us. One of those perceptions for younger people is they're flighty, they move around, those types of things. It's not fair, it's not always true, but make sure that you can tell stories about the discretionary efforts or the things that you did that went above and beyond. Tip to young players, if someone says, what's your biggest weakness? You always wanna spin it to try and be a positive, but don't roll out, I'm a perfectionist. I'll spend way too much time trying to make sure everything's perfect. It's so canned and, and overcooked, and most managers and leaders have heard it before. Think about where you can add value. 
So there's a difference between, oh, I can do discretionary effort, which means you know, I might be the last guy to leave or something like that. But what are the things, as a person with limited to no work history, what can you bring to the table immediately? You know, Really think about how you could add value to the business and why it would be worthwhile for this person to take you on board and give you an opportunity. Now, as the, this interview is winding down, there is an opportunity for you to drop into the pot that, hey, I wouldn't mind doing an internship, and by the way, I'd do it for free. Uh, you've just gotta be really careful about how you do that. So I wouldn't sit there and go, so, can I have an internship? Um, you could probably gently lead into that question saying, hey, does the, this organization, this company ever consider things like internships, unpaid work experience, those types of things? At that point, most managers would cotton on, oh, hang on, this person's angling for something. Um, and if you do it in a sort of non-intrusive way, which is, look, I'd be really open to those types of things. I'd love to volunteer my time. Is there an opportunity to come and shadow some people within the business? That's how you can sort of gently start to egg your way in there. So think about how you would drop that in towards the end of the conversation and really um, start to set yourself up here. Now, if you've been able to engage their attention, you've been able to get them talking throughout the uh, meeting and you've asked the right questions, the person's not gonna say, uh, no. Or very few will. And remember, you're potentially offering your services for free. So you've got a lot to offer. Uh, you've done all the right things. Now the brave part is asking for the opportunity. And that's one of the things I learned early in my career around sales was sometimes you just have to ask for the deal. Um, so don't be afraid to say, hey, is an opportunity. Uh, as I said, if you just blurt that out the first minute you're in the meeting, you're probably not gonna do too well and you need to read the play as you go. If you've got someone who just is a brick wall, you're not going anywhere, probably don't ask the question. But then again, would you really wanna go and work with someone who's not really giving you much time or effort? So there's some easy little tips that uh, we hope you can put in play. And good luck, this is going to really help you get your foot in the door and get that first opportunity.